Hey everyone, um, let's start my stream today. Um, can you hear me fine? I hope. I'm gonna start closing my windows. I, I don't need all of it. Mm, nope. Okay. That's just a style, it's a cyborg and a pretty cool one. <laughs> yeah, like, um, yeah, it could be anime girl, and also it can be cyborg. I, I don't really, I don't, I don't think it feel it really matters. Okay, I'm gonna fix some stuff that, like, I made last week. Like some of the stuff, like I do some changes, and then if I look back after stream and like I regret some changes or like I find some like mistakes happening on stream, so try and fix those. Uh, I just need to change the opacity. I think I need to like fix the fingers. It was a placeholder, but um, I would like to change some parts. Oh, uh, render capacity. Just need to change the color. Yeah, I was like testing the fingers or the hand locations last week off the stream and like I was holding cans all over the place and like I, I thought to myself like people don't hold cans like this like pe people hold cans like more diagonally right. So hard to say. Like, you, you, like it, you you hold the cans like this, right? It, it's, it's gonna be like this. Not 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 like this. Some of the things, like when you do, um, like do, do sculpting, like it feels weird if you do it in real life. So you you gotta be careful about these kind of like changes. So um, it's the same for like if you hold a pencil, you like you don't hold it like this, right? You hold it like a bit more tighter inside you, right? Say, Daisuke, did you cover how to make the face and head in depth in the older streams? I'm having a hard time getting mine right. Um, I did a separate video on my personal channel, but like, yeah, it, it, like I can talk in details if you want, um, like if there's demand for it. Anime head to push. There's a couple of like tips when making the anime kind of like a style head and I'm not a master of it but like I can huh. 
Why is it not working? Um, I don't think the YouTube got the comments. Um, it was shut on Twitch. Did the guys on YouTube got this comment or the link to the post? Some kind of like API issues, I guess. Oh no, no. Hmm. Yeah, it says unable to connect. Sending data. Ah, sorry guys. Is it dead? Let me check. It, it, it's sending data for for sure. I'll send. I'll try to send the comments or the link again so if you missed it you can check yes yeah, trying to send okay so the YouTube I think the English version was able to get the comments but not the well yeah should be fine yeah so when you're making the head um, the thing to keep like the the thing to keep in mind is that you you don't really have a uh, wiggle room to like have your eye sockets or um, the ears on the back side of your head so you don't really have this kind of like um, depth to play with so when you're making uh, a character especially for animes um, you need to like trick or um, you have to you have to like trick some like depth um, having like a layers of like hairs or um, well meaning like you have to have something in front of the thing so it feels like you have the illusion of depth to it so um, for example if you have uh, a tree and then if you have a tree be bef before you so um, like if you take a photo then if you have a tree before your head um, you can have that kind of like illusion of depth because the tree is in front of you and then your head is off, like coming after after that tree right and like when you're making those kind of like anime heads you need to like keep those kind of like tri tricks in mind so um, so it's hard to explain but like you gotta like have those kind of like depth so this strand of hair comes before the another like strand here um, let me show you so this this hair strand comes before this right and then you have the face of the head so these kind of like um layers of like stacks of like um depth is kind of like important and like if you if you look at the actual like anime kind of styled head um you don't really have so much like um depth to it let me draw you a guide so for example, um, I usually do my head like this, and then oh, oh, yeah. So the head start here, and then and. 
Yeah, whoa. I don't know why the pen tablet is working weirdly. So you have this kind of like that, right? And then the ear comes usually on the middle, like this. And then you have the jaw lines. And then in the middle of the ear and the nose, you, you really have the eye sockets ending here. And then you have the middle part, like the nose, like the, the bridge of your nose. And then you, ha you kind of like have this kind of like balance between like you have the half position and then you have the one fourth position and then you have the one eighth position. So it's usually ratios. Um, compared to the um, the Western anatomy, so if you look at anatomy books, like you, um, the anime head is following those kind of like anatomy rules, but it's more stylized in a way, um, so it doesn't really um, have a lot of like um, well, it's more like neat, neat or like it's more straightforward. So it's like these kind of like ratios are important. Like, um, like if you have your head, and then like if you think about this kind of like vert vertically, this is your entire head length, right? And then you have the middle part of the ear um, coming. Well, usually the eyes are in the middle, and then the one third of the um, stuff goes to the nose of the like head of the nose and then one third will be the mouth position so yeah uh, like these kind of like simpler uh, ratios are really important for getting the um, heads um, looking um, like the anime kind of like styled head and Like, it's more subtle than you think. Like, my kind of, like, style is more, um, distinct. So, if you ask another, um, like, anime kind of, like, style figurine artist, um, you can see the difference between my kind of, like, styled head compared to, like, for, for say, Sakaki-san. Sakaki-san has a different kind of, like, style of head. And like he makes the eyes even more flatter than mine. So then also um, he his like um, cheek cheekbones are really on more shallow position, so it's more uh, flat compared to mine. So this kind of like style is um, different between artists but these kind of like half and one third positions are really um like pretty much the same like it's just those kind of like subtle changes in ratio would um go a long way to like make it distinct I would love to like explain it in a more better term, but like, <laughs> um, like it, it's pretty hard for me to explain in English. But yeah, the important part is ratios. Like, um, just the balance between where your um, parts are. and not making it too um, too harsh on the like edges you want to make it cute not really um, sharp in details
Yeah, um, like the stream seems to be a bit rocky today. I'm sorry if you're having some technical diff difficulties. It's, it's pretty hard for us to actually have a stable stream if the APIs is not really responding or if each service is having some issues. So I guess besides the proportions, each artist will reach their own style in the end. Yeah, so it's just like having a small amount of like wiggle room for each artist to play around is the essential part of those kind of like variations. So, like, I, I I understand it's, like, um, so the Western stylized is more following the actual anatomy, and the Japanese style anime heads are more following the ratio uh, compared to the anatomy. So, um, it's the difference between are you a slave of anatomy or are you a slave of the ratio. So, those kind of, like, um, difference, I think, is the like distinct distinction between the like western stylized compared to the like japanese stylized And I think more, like, if you actually look into more um, tutorials related to drawings, uh, so if you look into those kind of like drawing communities talking about how to draw anime kind of like styled um, drawings, uh, you get more information or you get a better understanding of like how to get those kind of like styles. Because like we like if you if you look at Sakaki on the stream like it's obvious that um, he's trying to replicate um, what the illustration actually looks like compared to the actual anatomy or like actual three um, D object it should look like. So there's a huge difference between what kind of like stuff we are actually taking consideration when making these kind of like styles. What kind of build would you recommend to run ZBrush? Uh, for PC wise? Usually um, if you go to the website you will see uh, ZBrush spec. And then you can follow this um, um, highly recommended specifications. And then if you get the latest um, CPUs, it's gonna it's gonna be fine. For a starter, mm, depends on like what kind of like stuff you want to make. To be honest, like if you're gonna sculpt a really decent decent model, it's better to have a good a good amount of RAM and then good amount like good um, CPU but usually if you get a gaming PC that's that's just fine because it has all the requirements of a good um, ZBrush PC at the same time
Yeah, so ZBrush usually like most like most of the features, like 99.9% .9 of the features are only using CPUs. The only one uh, feature GPU is used in ZBrush is the polygroup it. It's just that one feature. Yeah, people seem to use that, uh, use the polygroup for getting a good topology or good getting a good polygroup lines. I know there's a like popular technique going around. Also, it could be used for like making um, cloths designs. Like for example, if you want to separate. Let me show you. So if you have a paint like this, and then if you want to have a separate polygroup like this, you can just like paint or just like make a line, and then you can make this um, black line as a different polygroup, and you can do those kind of like stuff. So it's pretty handy for like making hard surface and also making these kind of like cloth designs as well. Yeah, it's pretty thin. Why did I do this? <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, it's pretty handy. Like, it's handy in a lot of like situations. Would love to like just spend more time on sculpting. Like, I love I love to like spend my whole weekends like just sculpting. <laughs> yeah, it's just like fun to sculpt and just spend time sculpting.
It's it's so relaxing as well. Like you don't need to think about think about anything else. Just just shapes and it's kind of like therapeutic. So recently I was thinking about like making a, a video of like me just sculpting without my like voice or like without my actual mic setting. It's just like sculpting and some birds tweeting. <laughs> I was thinking about making those kind of videos because it, like I think there is kind of like demand of like real relaxing music and then um, seeing things getting done without any like fuss or like, without any time lapse. If I could like record or just isolate the um, pen tablet noise, like just like tapping noise, I think it will be even therapeutic as well. But I don't know how to like isolate the noise of the um, pen tablets. If I talk over them, it's going to get ruined, right? <laughs> yeah, those kind of like stuff. Like, I'm really like surprised of um, people watching rest restore restorations, like re like restoring a knife or restoring a woodwork, and those kind of videos are really popular on youtube right now and i'm kind of like surprised at the amount of people watching it because it's just like fixing knives right but usually the channels they don't really talk over it they don't really explain you things they don't really explain the like um tips and tricks of what like what kind of like stuff they are doing or like what kind of tools they're using they don't really explain you things they just do it and then it's just like a grinder noise or um, a sandpaper like a scrubbing noise I, I think it's more an S A M S A A S M R compared to the actual like um, the result they're looking for so for me that's that was pretty interesting to actually look at And when I was a child, like I, I really felt the um, um, sewing machine. You know, the sewing machine when when you sew your um, cloth, um, it goes tap 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 tap. And those kind of like um, my mother is like doing those kind of like um, patchworks or like knitting and those kind of like stuff. So. Um, when I was a child, like it was like kind of like relaxing to like hear her do those kind of like um, machining or those kind of like sewing, sewing. So I I do kind of like see the demand for those kind of like um, like mechanical noise or some like sound of nature. Especially, um, my favorite kind of like videos are from the primitive technologies. Um, I, I think the channel name is like the that, but like what they do is that they like hit rocks to get some uh, like rock like stone tools or um, do some bush work, like they um, chop wood and then create some like tent or those kind of like 
primitive stuff. And those those are interesting. Like it's interesting that it has those kind of like te like technical stuff, but they, he doesn't really explain you things. It's just like um, it just like makes you watch, and then if you go to the actual um, blog and then read the technical details, he actually explains what kind of like techniques or what um, stuff. Uh, like what technology was um, invented in that kind of like period and when and what kind of like um, region it was used in and those kind of technical details are not really watched compared to the actual um, relaxing uh, video that he makes so so I think there's a bigger demand if we just don't talk and then just do the job and visually do the rest. Yeah, th there's a whole bunch of like cat like same kind of like categories because um, he's the one who made it famous, and then other channels are uh, following up those kind of like trends. I remember there's a channel. Um, making some pulls every single time like I'm I'm kind of like surprised the amount of pulls you can make with uh, rocks and trees and branches <laughs> but every single video is like making pools with those kind of like um, simple primitive stuff and I'm kind of like baffled <laughs> But like after I watch a couple of them, it, it really gets boring because it's nothing new for each video. Yeah, I guess it's just uh, using Minecraft and buckets, right? <laughs> it's just like you, you just need some couple of like three metals and then you get a bucket and then you just need to like stack the waltzes on top of each other Oh, when I mention like I watch Minecraft videos, people are pretty surprised because like um, like people think Minecraft is just only watched for watched by kids, but like I watch Minecraft videos when I um, play with my friends, and some of the videos are really crazy, right? And the amount of like red stones they can use for a really complex um, like mechanical design it's really interesting
Okay, so I do have a couple of like things that I need to change because I don't really like this. So I'm going to delete this. Well, I'm going to isolate the others first and then it's going to be easy. So I just need to do this. Basso. Yeah, like Minecraft is kind of like interesting when you think about like like the block aspect. It's kind of like a simplified version of like Z Modeler in a sense. It is kind of like interesting. By the way, more on topic, off, uh, on topic, but maybe not so much. When it comes to streaming, does copyright for character matters much when it's fan art? Well, it depends. Like, um, for 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 example, like um, I'm not really uh, as a Pixel Logic employee. It's, it's hard for me to actually do some like fan art for the streams. Because like I'm I'm here as a company representative, right? But um, but if I'm like doing it as an individual, I don't think most of the um, copyright holders would um, like take into consideration that much. Hello, what's the best approach to do an eye? There's so many ways that I'm confused. For game and film, I'm trying to understand why some people does half eye with another half inside of the iris and others just a flat plane. So it's just a difference between styles. And like, for example, like for anime models, um, people tend to use flat planes because it's more um, fitting the style of the anime style gene. But if you're doing a, like, a sphere, it's easy to rig and then um, you don't really have to have a, like, a different kind of like system just for that kind of like style. So um, yeah, there, there's a com com couple of like differences and then you have those kind of like, benefits and like pros and cons for each kind of like stuff. So usually the difference between like the sphere and the flat plane is like designed by choice and usually comes down to like how easy easy it is or like how um, how it actually looks on design how easy it it is to rig i mean yeah SS shaders in games are just driven for color maps? What? Uh, I don't understand your question, sorry. Hmm. 
I should have fine. I just need to re-topologize it. Surface scattering is important in the eyes. Depends on your style, right? Like, if it's more photorealistic, like eyes, then yeah. But if it's anime kind of like styled eyes, you, the um, you don't really need to actually go into subsurface scattering. It's going to be like distracting. But in games, I don't know if you need all the maps. You'll need um, a albedo maps, and then you have to have the, um, well, depends on the style of game you're like seeking for, but usually they use PBR these days, and you gotta have those kind of like PBR um, related materials or textures assigned to it. So albedo, specular, rough. Specular roughness or metallic. And then you gotta have those kind of like normal maps. And then anything else that the engine would need. And depending on the eye, if it shines or not, you gotta you gotta have those kind of like um, emissive maps if needed. But it really depends on actually like what kind of like style you're looking for, to be honest. Like if it's more like really stylized, you don't really need so much texturing or you don't really need some maps to be honest you you just need albedo and some like tune tune shading materials it's better to ask um, other streamers because they're on them they are more specialized in the gaming world compared to me like I'm, I'm more in the 3d printing f field so feel free to ask other streamers How do you use zero mesh hard surface parts? Um, you mean you, you want to get a clean, clean, cleaning result on the hard surface? You usually, it's it's best to like use polygroup to actually guide your um, edge loops. So before you run. Zero measure. It's better to like get a polygroup assigned and then run polygroups, or no, run zero measure. It is more comfortable for you to use a tablet with a screen or one without a screen. It seems a bit uncomfortable for, for the back. Well, for me, like I'm 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 using a like screen-based tablet, and for me, like it's easy for me to like 
draw and like draw a line where I want it to. But like I don't really recommend buying a small um, screen pen tablet because it's hard to actually look at and then you you're gonna have a back pain like I, I have I had a back pain issue and I'm like I'm stuck struggling um, like after after having those kind of back pains for a long while but like now I don't really lean forward compared to the the old um, small screens I'm using a 24 Cintiq Pro and for me, it's really nice to have a big screen in front of me that I don't really need to lean forward. But um, for the pen tablet without a screen, uh, um, it really comes down to preferences. So I was like drawing some like pictures or like I, I did some drawing traditionally so I just used some pen pencil and pens to actually get my line works to be drawn so I'm kind of like used to like actually looking at my thing and then like drawing a line so if you're more used to like drawing without looking at it and then you're not gonna have much issues compared to compared to me like um, like having to look at the actual thing beforehand. Last question: You change this size unit in ZBrush for print. Um, so ZBrush works best in two units. So what you do is that like you go to Z plugins and then press. Uh, scale masters um, zbrush scale unify and then this will force your um, sub like entire subtool to become a unit two like size size two right and then what you do is then like you go to the export scale like on here right and then you set the scale to the um, a specific value like for example if you want to have a figurine in this case like 150 millimeters you're gonna you go to set the value to like 75 because you have two units and then you times the 75 to get the actual size right so you got you, you set the value to 75 and then check your model if it's the size 2 and then you get the actual size if you export it or you can go to the um, 3d print hub and then you can specify like update ratio and then you you can change the values to like 150 for example in Y and then you can export to STL and then you can get the specific value you want so there's you know, a couple of ways to actually do it and the simplest way is to uh, go to 3d print hub or just use the scale master to get the actual values What tutorial resources would you recommend to a beginner to ZBrush? Um, I just recommend the tutorial done by um, Solomon Blair, um, one of our former Pixelogic employees. Uh, you can just go to Z Classroom and then search beginners and then you get the answers. Also, there is a Tutorial done by, well, tutorial or ZBrush Live done by Joseph. And he goes into details of like how to get things done in ZBrush. So you can just search the term um, ZBrush Live beginners and then you get the um, live streams.
explaining things for beginners. Also, you can go to like Michael Pavlovich um, YouTube YouTube channel, and then he actually explains things in a more segmented way. So you can learn each features as you go along. And also you can go to um, Pablo Muniz. Um, if you search the term Zebrush Guides, he has a tutorial series for like absolute beginners. So there's like a lot of like resources you can go through to actually get the stuff you want. And some some people do the actual um, thing. Like if you if you want a bike, then if you search the term bike, and then you you get the bike tutorials as well. But like I usually recommend uh, people to go through the beginner tutorials first before you go to actual um, tutorials of what kind of like stuff you want. So you just need to remember a couple of uh, things before you head on to tackle your um, sculpting task. No problem. Are older and ZBrush tutorials still relevant? I heard ZBrush updates all the time. Yeah, um because the UI locations doesn't really change that much um, like if you even watch some tutorials back in like 4R7 it's still re relevant because there's only like so much change in UIs so if you remember the locations for example like as a brush uh, materials if you change the like um, locations of the alphas it's not gonna change that much so these like core uh, features locations didn't really change so if you look at the tutorials from like seven years ago or eight years ago it's still relevant but some of the tips uh, given like um, if they if they have a new feature introduced to replace those kind of like features some of the things may not be relevant but like most of the stuff are so you just need to like update the um knowledge when it comes to those kind of like specific stuff but yeah most of the stuff are relevant And also you can head on down to our Discord channel. Uh, if you, ah, ah, it's just, it's showing there. Like if you check out the Discord channel, you can ask questions there as well. So there's an invite link you can check. Uh, oh, <laughs> it changed. But like you can check out the link and then head on down to our Discord channel if you have any questions related to ZBrush, ZBrush Core and ZBrush Core Mini.
do you think are the limit of VR sculpting tools? Like, do you think they? Do you think are the limits? Uh, for me, like, I'm not really a fan of like VR sculpting because, in order to do VR, um, the polygon counts are limited because you have to have those kind of like refresh rates um, limited to 60 FPS because you're going to have like motion sickness if you don't. So um, you have those kind of polygon limits. You have those kind of like, um, you can't really sculpt for like eight hours straight, right? But I can do like eight, eight hours sculpting when I'm using ZBrush. But if you have the goggles set and then if you're playing around with VR, you get some kind of a motion sickness really, really quickly. So the maximum limit of like sculpting and then getting a decent model out of it would be like a couple of hours, right? So for me, it's like, I, for me, do I don't really feel an attraction compared to um, ZBrush or other sculpting applications if like yeah I, I don't really i don't really see the need of like vr yeah i'm like i do see a couple of people using it but i don't know like i don't i don't really see the benefit It's just my opinion, to be honest. What can I say? Like, ZBrush is the best uh, sculpting application, in my opinion. So. <laughs> People can disagree, but I have my opinions. <laughs> well, yeah, people can disagree, you know. What is your reference for this project? Um, I do have a couple of references, but... I have my um, pure ref references set for my model but I'm not gonna show it on the screen because well it's mostly mech models and some like cloth boots stuff like this <laughs> are there any consideration tech when using mixed workflow between ZBrush and Mervilus designer uh, you, you can search for those kind of like tutorials um, I only focus on ZBrush Well, to be honest, like, um, I do see the community getting a bit tired of, like, people 
seeing a blender comment to be honest. <laughs> uh, I I'm not gonna say um, if it, it it's annoying or not, but like I I do think people are getting tired of like seeing this kind of comments and reactions too often. It's like seeing that kind of like guy in anime forums and then starting a conversation about like uh, shipping and stuff like that. Like, I, I think it's really tiring to watch those kind of comments all the time. Do you consider Castlevania anime? Um, you're talking about the Netflix adaptation of the Castlevania? I, I haven't really watched that series, so um, it's hard for me to comment on it. But, I don't know, like... For me, like Netflix series of animes are like hit or miss for me most of the time. Some of some of it is great, really great. Some of it is like mm, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you mean that? Uh, like, do I consider like Western? Um, artists doing anime kind of style things and then should I call those kind of like a things anime? I don't really care. <laughs> um, I don't really care if like for example if, if it's a westerner doing anime and then if it's a Chinese company doing anime. I don't really care to be honest. For, for a Japanese guy to like talk about anime um, the distinction the, the actual distinction for anime is um, if it moves or not like um, but in the in the West um, people call mangas animes as well so um, like for example if I like like this is called anime style, right? But for me, it's um, manga style or like, it's different, right? <laughs> so, <clears throat> so, like for, for me, there's a difference between um, anime and manga, but the Western like community doesn't really have those kind of distinctions. And for me, like I don't really um, have the like divide or like a separation between Western or Japanese anime. If it's anime, it's anime. So if it's an doing some animations, then it's anime. Um, yeah, the bu the budget is different, you know, um, like, I know, I know the, I, I know a couple of, like, 3D animation company doing really good stuff, like, for example, um, if you know to Toei Animation, um, they did a really good anime, uh, 3D animation called, um, 
So ex exile from a, a paradise. Uh, expel from paradise, sorry. So if you search the term expelled from paradise, um, and Toei Animation did a really good job for, um, for, for, for that specific show. And, but if you compare it to other animes, the budget is really, really different, right? So each, um, each animation itself has a budget and then um, usually the TV series doesn't really have a huge budget compared to a movie and then if you if you start comparing a mu movie to the TV series there's a like huge budget difference and there's a time limit of like what kind of animation you can apply and for a 3D animation, there's like two steps or like three steps to actually get the animation done. And then like the primary animation and then the secondary, right? And then the, those kind of like uncanny valleys happen when you have the, um, the secondary sh like animation not really polished enough. And then you have those kind of like weird uh, like flow in the movement of your hands and um, body language or body movement isn't really weird so if they don't have enough time to actually polish the animations they it, it's really hard to like get the results yeah hoseki no kuni I think, uh, let me check. Hoseki no Kuni was done by... Yeah, Studio Orange, right? Um, Studio Orange is known for like making good an like three D animations. I actually talked to a guy who did a couple of like um, code code guesses, three um, D models. Uh, Ganso, yeah, the, the Ganso is really, really nice. Like, I think, I think it was Digital Frontier doing Ganso. Yeah. Yeah, I think it just comes down to budget, like. To be honest, I know when people mention "Oh, Berserk," the the recent and like the anime adaptation was really bad. Like, I I, I kind of like agree, but <clears throat> it was hard for me to actually watch the <laughs> Berserk, the recent adaptation, because like the feel of the character was not really there. But it's not just like it, it's not the issue itself with like 3d animations it's just a budget issue nobody's going to complain about like lower budget anime being like um, the de facto standard of like anime right
but somehow like 3D animations like repetition is tarnished because of like lower budget 3D animations. So I don't know. <laughs> but I do see like studios and preferring to use like 3D to cut budget. So I I feel it's a bad bad kind of like trend. And, and I think I think that's the reason why um, the three D is kind of like hate and like ha has a bad reputation in anime fields. But for me, like uh, as a guy making three D models and like three D um, characters, it's kind of like sad because like it, it could be a really good three D model, but somehow the animation could be like falling down the uncanny valley and then it's kind of like sad when that happens and I guess people know about EX arms <laughs> Uh, for me, for me, that was just a sad anime. It was hard for me to watch. Yeah, it's yeah, it's like there's a couple of really good like techniques or like like for example, um, if you know, um, oh boy, I'm having a hard time like remembering things. Um, Blam, if you know Blam. Um, they they did, did a really good job on the um, like tune shadering look, the the unique kind of like tune shadering. It was pulling in pictures, doing those kind of like um, unique things, and they they even made it like a shader like shader or the rendering engine for that this specific anime. I, th I think it was called Maniki. And it had a really like distinctive look compared to other animes. Yeah, Spider-Man the Spider-Man the um, the movie the the recent one was really nice as well. Yeah. So, if you have the budget, then people can do that. <laughs> it, like usually, it just comes down down to the budget, budget and time. Hey, as usual, um, I'm like having a brain fart to be honest. <laughs> oh boy, I can't remember things. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, it's it's fun to like talk about anime and then being able to sculpt. Yeah, it's always budget and time.
I know there was a couple of like controversies related to like Attack on Titans, like um, CGI kind of like quality talk was going on. Like for me, that's not an issue. <laughs> like I've I felt it was really weird, to be honest community talking about like bad see like graphics when it comes to those I was like have you seen EX homes to be honest <laughs> Cyberpunk 2077, they had the budget, don't know why, they didn't just do it. Well, um, I, I don't know, like, it, it was a nice game, like, I really enjoyed the main scenarios, the, the design was great. But yeah, some 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 of the things were like I feel I I felt like it need did needed some polishing. Like for example, if I got like chased by a police, it's really to really easy to just like uh, like shake it off. Just like running outside of the like map and then boom, you're not you're not chasing anymore. Yeah, like for for me, like I I finished the main scenarios, but like I didn't really go into details of like the side quests. For example, I didn't really get Skippy. <laughs> if you know about Skippy, like um, it, it's it's kind of like fun to play around. Oh boy, I need to get Skippy. There's a lot of like games recently I haven't finished. Uh, for example, I haven't finished um, Sekiro. I started it and then I didn't really finish it. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know about the, the modes and the like the bait and switch he does. I recently started Valheim and I haven't like actually I've beat the first boss but I haven't like gotten my hands on the second boss yet I've got his location but not actually being able to like defeat it yet And recently there's Monster Hunter coming as well. My friend actually like um, invited me to play it, but I didn't really get the chance to actually play it. So how people actually follow these trends to be honest, like <laughs> how many times do they have in life? Like, come on.
like I'm I'm really impressed when like um, for example VTubers um, start playing a new game and then like following the trend compared to me like um, this, this sculpting all day and then like um, forgetting about the release of the game and then like my friends reminding me about it and then like my friend like after I get the game my friends are really already um, switching to another game and like I'm, I'm like what, what what about this game like I just bought it like Yeah, the character motions are really interesting in the recent versions as well. Like, I, I really played uh, Monster Hunter for a long time. It's already been like 10 years. No, more than 10 years, like 15 years. So I really have a good impression about Monster Hunter. But I how I, I don't really have the time to actually play it, so it's kind of like sad. Hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, like for example I wanted to like get into getting get get my hands into like um blade and souls and for japan the trend of like blade and souls um went away pretty really really, really quickly and for me, like it feels sad because like I wanted to get into that game, but like my friends are not playing anymore, and then hard for me to find a play player who is like actually wanting to play with me. And it's hard to like hard to follow a game or like how hard to play a game if you don't really have a friend actually playing with you. And for me, like I have a couple of like um, no nostalgia games. Like, for example, I I played Asgard for a long time, which may, like most of the Western people may not know. But like, I think the other game would ring some bells. But um, for example, I played Ragnar Ra Ragnarok Online, and I tend to like go back to those kind of games because I feel some like nostalgia towards those games and for me like I'm going back and forth between nostalgia and then like trying to get a new game and then it, like I'm going everywhere <laughs> to be honest it's hard for me to like follow the trend Hmm. Yeah. See if the see if thieves are like seemingly pretty fun to play. Recently, I was playing talk like Escape of a Escape from Tarkov, but like my friends started to like feel it's too hardcore for them, and then. Um, we switched to playing Apex recently.
Yeah, for me, the Ragnarok Online's like recent like mechanics is like too too hard for me to follow, to be honest. Like, um, I used to play like Rogue, but the like main trend of Rogue is now like the Archer style. But for me, like I I, I liked using Snatcher. Um, oh, in Japanese it's Snatcher, but I think it's the international is called Mug, uh, where you can steal items from the ca like from the enemy. And uh, like I really love that like mechanic, but now the rogue job is really specifically used towards like archer styles and like i'm kind of like sad seeing those kind of like like trend of um, meta i guess meta is like not following my like favoritism i prefer to have some kind of like meta going back and forth between like different kind of like weapons but usually that's not the case and even in the mobile version of the Ragnarok Online it's called Ragnarok Masters and in that game you don't even have mug you have mug but you can't steal items, so I'm kind of like sad because I want I want I want that mecha mechanics. Like I want to steal items, not money. <laughs> like, uh, it's, it's just like sad. I'm 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 com com coming from a nostalgic point, but yeah. ETF is pretty hard. Yeah, it, it is hard. Like it's hardcore, but like that's that's the whole point of Escape from Tarkov. <laughs> ah yes, I miss open world PvP so much. Being able to mug other people's or causing monster trainers. <laughs> well, um, it's towards PVE, so you can steal items from a monster, and then you like sometimes have some monsters who are uh, who doesn't really drop items that much but since mug forces you to pick some items <clears throat> it's easier to get some like specific like rare items from a specific monster and then i think the game developers thought it was like um, a game breaking feature and then it like really fall out of trend I play FF14 pretty often, but Mog just double the drops, like one wall drop means you get two walls. Huh. You still end up farming to hell and back. Hmm. Uh, my sister plays um, FF14. But, like... She, she's one of the top players in the servers. <laughs> kind of like interesting. Like... And she, she does mention that the game itself has a easier roof compared to the FF11 like era. So in FF... 11 people were able to like grind as hard as they, hard as they want but now 14 has a lower roof compared to 11 so people are easy to catch up compared to 11 and that's by design so.
Kind of like interesting to see the difference between game designs for each games. Oh, by the way, if you have any questions related to ZBrush, and then uh, if if you have a hard time like asking me questions on stream, um, you can catch me on Discord. You you can see a slider of an invite URL in the slides. So feel free to ask me questions if you have one, or you can ask them on the in Discord channel. Someone will ask um, answer them for you. I'm working as a designer for one, and the constraints we have at least are very big. Yeah, yeah, uh, understandable. And like, if you choose one kind of like design choice, you can't really switch to another. Um, so those design choices are really important, and then it would like change a lot of things. What do you do in case of the eyes and eyes and eyebrows? You use texture. Also, they are separate tools from the head. For an anime model, I don't really separate the eyes from the head. It's just poly paints or textures. Other artists tend to use textures, but like I tend to use poly paints. Or sometimes I just separate the um, eye, just the eye part, and then paint the um, eye and then move it around. If I need to change the eye positions, really, uh, depend on the, depending on the pose. But I don't really use the eyes if I if I'm like actually printing for the model. Like I I just chuck it away. Do you use Substance or Mari? I used to use Mari, but that's just my personal use. I haven't used it for production. And like, like I, I'm really specialized in like 3D printing. I'm not really a texture kind of guy. I like sculpting, not texturing. <laughs> So it, it's it's kind of like hard for me if I get a texture related on like questions. Like I'm more specialized in sculpting, so yeah, like you can combine using the uh, render tray. 
you know, BPR filters, and then you can get some like really cool renders from ZBrush. And like since the and like addition of like um, preview AOs and the ray tracing AOs, like you can do a lot of things as well. It's so, so much fun to just sculpt and talk about things. I wish I could do this all day, you know. <laughs> so you can specialize on sculpt and there are others that specialize on textures. Like, there are two different teams. Uh, no, I work for Pixelogic, so I just, like, sculpt and then be done with it. Like, if I'm working for production, then, yeah, there, there is... Depending on the production workflow or pipeline, uh, you have people doing the sculpts, and then you have the people who are doing textures and then the actual like look dev things. Or depending on the team, you have one person doing all the things as well. So it really depends. But usually, like recent productions are uh, like really specialized in each fields. So um, the guy who does rendering or like guy who does uh, texturing, the guy who does rigging is usually different. But for me, like I just usually do 3D printing, so I don't really need to do any textures. Sometimes if I do need to do textures, it's just usually um, really simple things. I don't really go into like depths to actually get some like UV texturing or like, UV mapping done in a serious fashion. The special specialities in 3D are many, many, but it depends on the budget. And 3D generalist would be would do everything, but as they say, jack of all trades, master of none. Yeah, it de really depends on the um, what kind of like production you're working for. If it's a small studio, it usually comes down to like generalist doing everything, like starting from end. I'm beginning to end. Like they do the actual modeling, they do the actual rendering, look dev, like the actual um, editing of the videos, composites. 
Some people do 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 all things, but if they are like on a bigger production team, it, it, it's usually specialized. But recently, it's rare to have a person who can do every, everything. It's kind of like, I think it's under undervalued, to be honest. If they can do everything, it's it's really good for your team as well. Like, but you do, you you don't really need everybody to be able to do everything. It's just usually comes down to like a couple of people being able to do everything, and then um, handing it handing it over to people who can do specialized things. For me, like I really like like to do sculpting, so I really want to focus on just the shapes. To be honest, like for me, like texturing is not really fun for me. I do have a couple of reasons why I want to do some like anime sculpts compared to like photorealistic stuff because if you do photorealistic stuff like you just need to go into the nitty gritty details of like the skin pores and stuff like that but I don't really want to spend time on like sculpting skin pores. If I try learning to do photo photorealistic stuff, I, I think I can do it, but it's not my cup of tea, like you know. Yeah, if you already have the general understanding of like um, the anatomy, I think it's not really that hard. But for me, like um, I do have some kind of like tendency to just um, use my like anime anatomy or like photorealistic stuff. For me, that's the hard like hard thing for me to transition between the photorealistic stuff and then the um, anime stylized. Like, it's the kind of like opposite, um, opposite thing when if you are really um, 
a for, photorealistic um, sculptor, and then if you understand anatomy, it's hard for people to transition to like stylized because they don't really have the language for the um, stylized stuff. But it, it it takes time, but like it, it's possible. It's just sometimes it's hard to transition between those two. Learning is, is endless. Yeah, yeah. Some people think it's just couples like what watching a couple of tutorials, but no, it's just sculpting and learning all the time, every time, even on work, even even on like weekends, every every day it's like my learning. Huh. Interesting perspective. <laughs> and I think we tend to spend our weekends as well, like learning and sculpting and making things. learning the trends as well. How come we're not rich? <laughs> yeah, for me, like, holiday is my time to sculpt, to be honest. Like, like, uh, on the weekends, I sculpt eight hours a day recently. Like, sometimes I do take time off, but like, that's when I'm like having a whole health issue or sleep, like having a less time to sleep. <laughs> I think we should. I think we should. <laughs> Well, I don't think that's gonna work, to be honest. Like, I just want to scalp, you know. It's like, like, it's really different when you get the satisfaction of like making like being able to make things like if you get the shape correct like it's really satisfying to watch it like look, look at it after you're able to like get the shape and then after a while you get depressed because like you didn't get the shape correct so <laughs> uh it's like the rush of like adrenaline, ad adrenaline, adrenaline, ad ad adrenaline, adrenaline, fuck, <laughs> adrenaline, adrenaline, forget it. <laughs> adrenaline, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it, it, it is kind of like a rush. And then you have that like. I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna reference it as a drug, but like a, a withdrawal. And then you have the moment that you realize you uh, messed something up in the sculpt, and then you realize, oh, I need to get that correct next time, and then you learn some something in a way. <laughs> I I know I know how to pronounce it, but like my tongue is not moving. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I have a question. I'm making a link, but do I pose it first and then sculpt the cloth and accessories, or sculpt everything and then pose it? Depends on your workflow. But you can do both, like you can pose it first and then sculpt the cloth. I tend to do the posing first, but if I have some models like this, it's like it has like symmetrical parts, then I tend to like get the symmet symmetrical parts first and then do the posing later. I I sometimes have a hard time like pronouncing some specific words, but it's weird. Like some of the things is really easy to pronounce, and some some of the things are I find it really hard to pronounce. It's weird. By the way, in Japanese, it pronounced it, it's it's pronounced differently. Like uh, we can pronounce it adorenai adorenai and like because of that difference between the pronunciation um for me it's like sometimes hard to process in my mind the difference between japanese and english oh, no. I don't know what English pronunciation you um, hear in me, but like I tend to speak in a British pronunciation and then a mix between some like American pronunciation, and then you have a bit of like Japanese pronunciation. So I speak a really weird English. At the risk of sounding dumb, how do we pronounce your name? Um, um, yeah, it's, it's hard to pronounce. Like Daisuke, Daisuke is the correct way to pronounce Japan in Japanese. But I know it's hard to pronounce for like West Western people, so I just call it Daisuke. Daisuke, it's fine. So I know a major major baseball leaguer. Um, who's called uh, Matsuzaka Daisuke. Um, he was pronounced Daisuke, which was the common way to pronounce it. So I'm fine with all of it. All those I'm like I'm I'm used to getting pronounced in a different way. So.
<laughs> waiters, waitress say when you ask for something in the cafe. Ta tashi tashikari ah, kashikomarimashita. <laughs> yeah. Yep, catch you later. Your accent is, isn't very strong. I guess you moved to the US when you were 13, 17 or something in your teens. Well, I, I lived in England for uh, five years when I was a kid, when I was like um, six to 11. So, and then I, like, I came back to Japan and I didn't really have the chance to talk in English. And then, like, 10 years passed, and then I started watching YouTube and then, like, relearned my English there. So, I have a weird pronunciation. Like, I have a mix between um, British and American pronunciations. Yeah, like, I have a brother and sister, and my, like, older sister can't really speak English because she didn't really have the time to, like, adapt to the, like, English language. And my younger brother um, is also having a hard time learning um, compared to me. So I think in, in my family, I, I was the only one who was able to establish a language like vocabulary my my brother can like understand english but his pronunciation is not really fluent compared to me so It feels really odd. Like. And uh, I know it's it's pretty risky to like spend your time in like foreign countries and then not being able to learn that language, or like you 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 feel. You, you do feel that you lack the identity to live in your country, to be honest. Like, especially in Japan, like, people tend to, like, uh, feel that you're different compared to others if you can speak English. So that's that as well. Do you find yourself judging other Japanese with heavy accents? Um, no, no, to be honest. Like, if, if, if I can have a conversation in English with a Japanese guy or Japanese person, um, it, it's fine. Like, I feel it's more impressive that they can talk in English compared to like judging people. Because it's pretty rare for people to be able to speak English in Japan. I don't know why. They ha they should have the education background, but it's not really. It's not it's not a common skill to be able to speak, especially speaking is the hard part. They they learn how to write. They can um, write in text. They can. They can like listen, but they can't really talk. When I mask it, switch to the other side as well. How can I stop this? Oh, you can go to brush, auto masking, and then you can disable, uh, you can enable the backface mask. So. Um, if you're masking, you need to press the control key and then and press the backface mask. So if you try to mask it, like 
um, mask using the mask pen, it's not going to penetrate on the back side if, if you enable back face masking. Okay. I personally can't communicate with Spanish speakers using English. It's it's as if they spoke something else. No problem exchanging messages with them. Huh. Interesting. I notice that like I can tolerate a heavy accent in, like English like for example um, my my friend from France wasn't able to like distinguish the uh, person who was speaking some in like Indian English um, like I, I, I was able to listen the person listen to the person's like English accent with the like Indian kind of like um, heavy accent in included but the person next to me wasn't wasn't able to identify what he was saying so I don't know why I have the tolerance for those but I think it's some kind of like uh, British back background I had a friend who was like speaking English in a heavy Indian accent What about Jamaican? I had I had an experience talking to a Jamaican, and uh, I had a friend who was like coming from South Africa. So yeah, like for me, it wasn't really hard to distinguish. But I don't know. I need I need to actually try it because like his accent wasn't really really heavy. I guess, yeah. And I don't know, but like being bilingual um, makes you have the skill to like fill in between the gaps so if you don't really understand a specific term or language or the word um, you can feel like you can guess by um, like trying to fill that sentence with another language or another word and then you you'll try to like understand between the gaps and then you have the better understanding I did see a research paper talking about those kind of like um, concepts or the benefits of being uh, bilingual, being able to fill those kind of like gaps. And I don't know if it's actually true or not, but yeah. I'm sure a foreigner would have a tough time understanding Japanese country accents. Yeah, I, I think, yeah. Like, if you know a couple of things, like um, there's Kansai region language, and uh, Kansai region accents, and then you have um, Kanto region accents. And I live in Kanto, uh, which is more the uh, Tokyo, Kanagawa area, and I live in Kanagawa, so it's more in the Kanto region. But 
Like if you talk to a Kansai region person, it's totally different. So the word is different, the pronunciation is different. Yeah, Kansai dialect. Yeah. They have a different kind of like um, culture as well. Yeah. So um, sometimes a um, foreigner living in Japan would speak a perfect Kansai dialect in Japanese, and then it feels really weird, really, really weird because um, like people, like people think they can speak Japanese, but more in a like um, common Japanese term, like um, speaking in Kanto regions pronunciations compared to a uh, really localized kan 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 Kansai dialect. So it's like a Japanese guy talking in Texas dialect. <laughs> it feels pretty weird in a, in a way. I did have a friend who, who can t speak um, a fluent um, Texas region dialect. So he was like talking howdy in like <laughs> in in some, some Japanese forums, and like it was really weird. <laughs> I believe enough time and repetition spent with anything, and you have no choice but to learn whatever it is. Yeah, like if you have the interest, like it will like fit in naturally. Sometimes, like, I had a hard time understanding his, like, um, Texas dialect or Texas pronunciations or Texas terminologies. They have a different kind of, like, language compared to a British English. Yeah, because like a lot of like comedians are from the Kansai region. It's it's kind of like the um, unique way to like pronounce things, or it, it, it's it's a like cultural thing as well. And there is also a more narrow, narrow like definitions of like each region as well. So, for example, um, the broad term is Kansai, but if you go to Nagoya, and, um, if you go to um, Kyoto, if you go to Osaka, it, and um, those kind of like region have has a difference between those like small regions, and people don't want to like be defined as Kansai, Kansai dialect. So you have those kind of like battle between each regions, but you can't really hear them if you're not from that region. So it's hard to like get the understanding from the outside view. <laughs> it's the same for um, Kanto region. You, you have a difference between um, um, Yokohama, and you, you have a difference between um, Ashigara, and you have a bit more difference between more like Chiba region like dialect as well. Like you have a lot of like differences between 
all of those regions. Oh, I'm not fam familiar with like um, Brazil dialect. Never heard of those kind of different definitions, but yeah, I I guess it's the same thing. Like, um, yeah, each region have those kind of distinguish, distinctive like um, pronunciations for each regions. It's the same for like Britain, like, like. Manchester, like kind of like pronunciations and like um, London kind of like pronunciations are different compared to other regions. Like Liverpool has a different kind of like pronunciation as well. Here in Spain, we have a lot of like variation as well. The changes are st steep. To the point I can't un I can't understand someone from the south. Huh. Interesting. interesting if we can translate that to like sculpting terms so for example if I'm like doing um, anime style but it's more Sakaki-san's way of doing things or is it like my style of doing things or like other like specific sculptors way of doing things if we can categorize those kind of like um, distinctive styles then it could be interesting but I think we need a historian to actually, uh, or some um, researcher who can distinguish those kind of like styles would be needed, I guess. But it could be interesting. Like, I don't think there's a research done by those kind of like distinct, distinctive like style of sculpting, especially for anime styles. I did hear from a person from the Philippines and they like speak a f like a variant of English in the Philippines and when they were like talking to a British person they they were having a hard time like making him understand the language so even though they're speaking the same language, it could be very difficult for people to actually make them understand. <laughs> it's interesting to see those kind of differences. Okay, it's already past 15 minutes, so um, I should start stop my sculpting and then go back to my job. I was able to sculpt the cloth, but not other locations that much. Mm. I would love to like <clears throat> focus on more on the broad details, but
Usually once I start start sculpting like it's hard for me to like stop sculpting. <laughs> It's fine, like, I'll have to talk. Sometimes I don't really feel like it, but sometimes it's better for me to like just talk and casually sculpt. I did have a rough day yesterday, so it's just therapeutic to like just being able to scan. How did I color this model? Mm. I think it was variation of gray. Oh, yep, yeah. gray. Gray and black. This one is black, this one is light green. And this part is green. Could be a bit more darker, I guess. Nope. Oh, it was this color. Okay. I did want to, to change this detail a bit. Let me just do this and like end my stream. I didn't really like the eye socket like shape.
you have a social media where you port your work? Oh, um, thanks for reminding me. Um, I've made a Instagram account recently, so you can search that. Uh, here. Or you can go to Zebra Central. Zebra Central to see my work as well. So if you go to Zebra Central and then search my name. You can find me here. So if you go to Pixel Logic Dice Gay, and then if you go to Gallery, you can like look at my work of like what kind of like stuff I'm posting. I do have a Twitter account, but it's all in Japanese, so I don't think most of the people are interested in Japanese, like, like me talking in Japanese. So. Like, you don't want to, you don't want to, like, always see the translation of some like weird Google translation happening on my posts. <laughs> well, I don't really post test models that much. Like I do post my work in progress on my Twitter, but that's usually just yeah, like I tend to not post um, those kind of like test models because for me it's gonna like hard, it's hard for me to like track my work if I post frequently too much. For anime style characters, the eyes are just painted, or something they could be real geometry. Really depends on what kind of like style you're looking for. Um, like for example, a couple of like um, anime studios prefer to have a like a sphere kind of like eyes, but they usually don't really want the actual um, shaders to look like a circle or a sphere so they tend to like trick by using some like sh shading tricks so it looks flat in a way
I think I better stop sculpting. Like I'm gonna endlessly, endlessly start like continuing on with like my sculpt. Okay, so uh, well, um, I want to change my head look, head rotations. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! How do you guys um, consider your work finished? For me, it's really, really hard to like, consider it finished. I think the eyes does look a bit, a bit better than the last version. is better. I don't remember ever finishing anything, to be honest. I simply have to stop. <laughs> yeah, that's my, that's my feeling when I consider finished. Oh, um, there was some book when I, like, I, I was reading some book and, like, the book was mentioning about productivity, 
and there was a segment where the um, the author explains the uh, benefit of like stopping your work in mid process compared to like actually finishing the process. So it, like if, if you stop in mid process, it's easier for you to go back to that work the next day because it's not finished. And then, then you can con continue on making that thing. And like when I was reading that, like I kind of I kind of agree to that statement, but for me it's men mentally hard to like actually stop midway. So, so it's hard. Are the model uh, are eyes a model out or painted in? Um, it's just painted in. Like if I just remove the poly paints, it's it's pretty flat. These look quite good. I personally like to physically make the eyes to get the sharper details of the eyelashes and raise ir irises as well. But painting is something else. Yeah, um, yeah. Depends on the person who, like, some people prefer to like sculpt the eyebrows, but like, like for me, if I actually printed this model, it's gonna be hard to actually actually. Um, tweak the details when I want to tweak them so I usually prefer not to like sculpt the, the eyebrows because I want to change them afterwards I don't know I find I find so much things that, that I want to change, like, it's not healthy. be too much on the upper side. Have you done any VR chart avatars before? No. I'm not really I'm I'm not a VR guy, to be honest. I know my friends are, but it doesn't really hit home for me. Like, I'm not really a second, what, what do you call this, um, second life kind of guy as well. I prefer to like, um, do some missions and like tackle monsters to be honest.
Okay, let me stop here because I'm gonna start tweaking every day and like start continuing on forever. So, see you guys. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>